Hey, you down here? Okay, well, no matter how high I get my camera up, I can't get it up and see my head in the dryer at the same, my whole head in the dryer at the same time. So, this is what matters is the work I'm doing. I'm going to go back to work on my white Westinghouse dryer. And um, if I get down here and see the, then I'm in it. But that's another four or five inches down when I step down there. Anyway, that's the best place I could see to put the camera. Um, so I've got my heating coil. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to set this. Uh, my remote. I think I'll put it over here. I'm afraid if I put it in my pocket, I'll well, over here then. If I put it in my pocket, and I'm using my wireless mic this time because last time I yanked the camera down over all the way down to the ground with the cable, I forgot to went just about that much too far. And I've tested it before I came out here and it showed to be working. Everything looks good. If there's no audio, then I'll be pissed. So, uh, But I don't have time to keep retesting everything. So anyway, I got my uh, parts. I um, guess I can stay down here until I get... Uh, I just bought the just the heating element. And I got it for 15 bucks. I finally kept shopping around. I finally found... I found them, I was couldn't re, I couldn't find the model number of the dryer anywhere on it. It's probably on there somewhere. And uh, I had bought parts for it. We've had this thing since my mom got it in '95 or '97 or something. From my grandma, she bought had it before bought it new, I believe. And uh, it was made in '93, though I thought it was made in the late '70s or early '80s. But there's the tag. The, there's a part number. The dryer's part number tag on the back. That didn't help me find anything, but but it says 593, and that looks like a date. So 5 forward slash 93. So I'm thinking it might have been made in 93. So I got that heating coil. I'm going to just, you know, put it on that metal backing plate. I ended up getting a bag of 100 of these. Uh, these are quarter-inch female um, crimp connectors is what I call them. And uh, <clears throat> that was just the most cheapest way to get them. I mean, you could pay five dollars for one or two, or you could pay uh, nine, ten dollars for a hundred. <laughs> so, and they're and they're high. Did I say high heat? They're made to handle high heat because the connections going to that heating coil need to be able to handle the heat. And uh, oh, and I got me some of this. I've been seeing it reviewed. Well, what's his name? I can't remember. Anyway, there's this one guy that does all these tests on YouTube. He's pretty cool. Oh, Project Farm. He's cool. He, he's real thorough, but this stuff held, held up pretty good. So it's a JB Weld stick. I've used JB Weld since since it was invented when I was a kid, I believe, back in the 60s. I don't, I don't know. It might have came out before I found it. but um, And it was pretty good glue, but it's not, never has been, you know, done everything they claim. But uh, none of that, nothing ever does, it does it. So, uh, I'm ready to put it back together. Still got my other new part that I haven't used yet, and I don't think it needs it. I looked back through my last video, and uh, I probably shouldn't. This is the wiring diagram, and I tried showing it on the camera. I noticed you get just in the right spot. It's upside down anyway. There's no, this camera, although it's a, Claims to be 4K. It doesn't make as actually as clear of a picture as my two uh, two megapixel phone cameras. They're better at focusing, and I guess their little plastic lenses are better little plastic lenses than the one in here. So I'm going to put it in the bottom of there, so maybe I won't ruin it. And uh, <clears throat> this one was 109 bucks, but it has a, it is said it has a 13 megapixel CMOS sensor which there's newer sensors in CMOS now that are supposed to be better but uh, I figured it would be uh, and, and they achieved the, the quasi 4k by uh, with up converting software in, in on the camera you know let me get this out so uh, I got it all out and ready to hook up ready to redo what else is back there oh yeah the covers and stuff so, um, anyway, uh, that's what I got to work with. 
So I think I'll go like this. So I won't be getting in the way. I think maybe this direction might be the way to go. Or this way. Like this, I think. I don't know. We'll see. So, uh... <clears throat> get my heating element. It, uh... I haven't gotten any hand tools out yet. I'll be needing some. So the heating element itself is, uh, and this is my box of used parts. It's got the stuff I need, you know, the, the keepers for this and all that. Let's put it back down there until I'm ready for them. So I'm not going to unwind it yet. It's, uh, it, it's pre-terminated. Those, those are important, you know. You don't want those coming off and shorting the thing out. Uh, actually, I thought it could possibly cause fires or something, but this so this dryer has uh, dryers in general has enough uh, between the uh, the uh, over, heat overload sensor thermostat. Uh, it you know if if this was to uh, short out, and it did. The old one did. Uh, I figured that out. Uh, once it gets, once this thing gets so, so hot, you know, what happens, with, that's what a, a heating coil d does. You, you direct short this, but it can handle it. It's kind of, you know, like welders, that's how welders work. Uh, and, but this can handle it, but of course the rest of the wiring can only handle so much. Uh, the, of course they design them. And I'm trying to think, I didn't, I was going to study that wiring diagram and see if I could figure, you know, figure it all out, but I never did. Uh, anyway, um, what I believe it did is the top section of it broke, you know, melted in two, fell down, got on here, and stuck to it. And uh, and so one, and so it's 220, you know, uh, and so on one, one leg was gone, it was disconnected. But it kept, and that's why it was heating very little, but still heating, I think. And I don't, this is what this thing looks like. I was thinking maybe I could show... Uh, it's just a tiny little dot where it was stuck. It didn't do any, like, I would expect it to really make some serious welding marks. But there was one, the reason I think that, because there was one half, you know, about three quarters of a coil stuck there. And, and then there was like 10 inches of it gone. And um, I think what it did is it fell down and welded itself to the back here so it was grounded. So one side, this is where the, the heat, the wiring comes in. One, this bottom side, the way it sits in there like that. Bottom side was was grounded, so it was working, and so it it was a 110 volt dryer instead of a 220 dryer until um, till the day that it uh, broke some more. I don't know if we moved it around or slamming the door did it, or I don't remember even what I thought now. But um, then it, it the rest it broke off. Then nothing was touching the ground, so it didn't come on anymore. I'm I'm pretty sure that's how it, how it did that. I could not see. I was I didn't think this was bad through my testing because um, in my mind, well, because it was coming on when I walked out here to start working on it. It was coming on, heating up, and over, and then tripping the overload thermostat, overheat thermostat, and um, shutting down. And it did it three or four times while I was just sitting here trying to get ready to work on it. And I was kind of disturbed, and then I thought, you know what, I swear, I think I've even seen it do that before. I heard it doing that and didn't really, maybe I didn't catch on to what was really going on. I do know that I felt it, uh, and I, I've had reports of, uh, of it being hot when it shouldn't be, when it's off. And what I'm saying is this thing was off, and, uh, and it was doing that. But it wasn't in the off position, it had time on it, and... Uh, but when you open the door and shut it, then it doesn't come back on, and it never used to do that, you know. So, and I was thinking maybe something's wrong with those thermostats somehow, or some kind of switch or something. The uh, timer, I started thinking the timer would, I thought, well, the timer's the only thing that I think could do that, you know. Let's see, let's just go, I'm going to run around here and grab some uh, screwdrivers and stuff out of my toolbox. Because as soon as I need a tool, if I don't have it, I'll be running after it, so... I don't really know what I need yet. I think I'll go ahead and get my... Well, let's wait until I start needing it. Well, 
I'll get it. Get my quarter inch socket set and that'll have most of what I need, I think. It's a little chilly out here. It's uh it was a cool night. I don't really know. You know, I didn't look at the temperature all night, so I don't really know what it was. But, uh, anyway, I'll put my tools over there on the chair. And, uh, but it's, I came out here around, now I don't even remember, 7, 7.30. Six, no, it was about 6.30 to 7. And got started setting up my camera and stuff. All right, there's where are some instructions here they are. But I wasn't telling. Well, I'm talking about this, but still getting sidetracked. Okay, I can't read it. Glad I got a magnifying glass. Okay, so here we go. Here's the little instructions. Uh, um, I think it's good to pay attention to that. I got this uh, first time. First time I found one that I thought would work, but I wasn't sure because I didn't know the model number of the dryer. Did I say the site that I used to always buy my parts from, and it's still really good for looking stuff up? But they went up on their prices. The shipping's always ten dollars. Uh, it just ends up costing too much. They went way up on their prices over the years. I, I found them about ten years ago. Uh, RepairClinic.com. They're real good though, and they pretty much only sell OEM parts, which is, you know, if you're gonna do this much work, I want it to last. Um, but I found the part number there and my model number was saved I had saved it somehow I'd figured it out and saved it in their website so then I, I found the uh, OEM part number for that the one they had they wanted $35 for it plus $10 shipping and I thought well I had looked all over you know Google shopping and Amazon and everything else and hadn't been and, and I found some but I didn't know for sure if they'd fit it and uh, one of the first ones I did find Made by made and sold, I believe it's made by Napco or well, Napco may be just a, a supply house, but it was on Walmart.com and uh, <clears throat> sold and you know sold and shipped by them. But I looked them up and they had a bad reputation. And I went to their site. I thought, let's see what the price is on their site, and it was just about ten or 50, 50 cents cheaper. Uh, but I looked at it, then it's when I looked them up and they had a bad reputation. Then I found another one, another company. It had a bad reputation, and I just went around. It took me two days to find find the one I bought, and I just thought, well, why? And the first ones, I well, I was first thing I thought I'd just buy that whole thing for sixty to sixty to sixty five. It'd be seventy dollars. If it was sixty dollars, it'd be seventy at you know a part repair clinic or. And there's a bunch of those other kind of sites. Some of them were cheaper than repair clinic. And some of them were, you know, some were like a couple hundred dollars for that thing. You know how they are. But um, so really, look, you really want to look around and make sure, and you want to make sure you you know you're getting the right part too before you go order stuff. But because uh, <clears throat> you'll be eating money if it's not right. Um, even if all you're doing is, you know, pay, you're going to have to pay to ship it back and. And like, well, the Snapco, they charge a restocking fee and all that stuff, too. So, and, you know, not a lot of companies do that. Uh, and uh, Well, I think they said they charge, somebody bought one that was faulty and they were still going to charge them a restocking fee. That's what I'm thinking I remember. But anyway, um, I ended up getting it. It says Napco on here. It didn't say anything about Napco, uh, the seller on, on Amazon. I'm getting dizzy and everything fell down. Uh on Amazon that sold this and I didn't see Napco on anything because I was wanting to stay away from them. But hopefully it'll be good. They may be the ones they may be the ones that uh, sell they make them and or sell them or just sell them to, to everybody. You know, they may be the supplier for this this element here. But uh it says made in the USA. So anyway, uh which is cool. If, doesn't say made in the USA with uh, Chinese parts or anything. So, uh, okay, yeah, just to connect the dryer. Been that way already. Divide the heater coil in half. Place the center support insulator in position at six o'clock. Center. Okay. Divide the heater coil in quarters with the coil support insulators at three o'clock and nine o'clock. Place the running coil insulators. Around the whole thing should be 15 total insulators, equally spaced. Of course, they go, they go where they go on there. 
but that does sound like a good idea to follow that pattern. I can't remember what I just read, but uh, if I can get the gist of it. They're saying start with the center of it. Okay. So let's try that. Uh, and uh, what I'm wondering is should I go ahead and put the... Now I'm kind of starting to think, should I go ahead and put the block on there, the mounting block, or should I wait? Maybe I should put it on so it'll be ready. Oh, I still got the old ones in there. Didn't take them out yet. Yeah, the uh, the uh, ceramic insulator connect for the connectors. I think maybe I want to have that there. That way I know exactly because I can get I can plug this in and get it to hold it for me. So. Um, yeah, before I even go looking for the screws or anything. Um, get my... Uh, I don't know how hard it'll be to... To squeeze them, they're... Uh, I actually just dang near messed this thing up when I was taking all this apart. Um, you'll be able to see it, but there's a... Oh, let's throw it around. <coughs> there's um It's getting too close. It's not good. I keep forgetting. On my phones, you can get up to what, like four, six inches. And they'll actually do better. You know, you can get this thing. It's got the oh, way worse focusing and light balance than the light balance and light and everything than my phones do. But it is overall still a sharper image, so that's why I'm using it. Uh, what am I trying to say? These uh, connectors, they go all the way through. This is what you connect the wiring to in the dryer, and this is where I... The other one was broke off, and I cut the one up, the other one off the longer one. But uh, there are, I don't know that you could see it on this thing. Let's see, where are they? I, can, I can't see good. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I wasn't thinking i just thought they were probably just jammed through there and i was trying to get them out and they didn't want to come out there they are so you might be able to see it on the camera that usually gets blurry but i'll try it uh they're been around the new one's all flat and they're been around and that's what keeps them in there that's a pretty common way for them to do stuff like that maybe the needle needle nose would be better depends on how tough these little tabs are but uh no they're not too tough yeah but i was i was uh i had to hold of the back side with my needle nose or some vice grips or something and i was beating on them with the hammer trying to pull them out just thinking they were just pull outs and uh and i well i, I kind of thought i saw something fly and it was a, it knocked a chip out of this that's what happened. I was watching back my video during the during the off time, you know. But uh, yeah, during the one, uh, you know, when I'm inside, I, I have several cameras. I have the endoscope, but I can't do that with just out here like this. I can't do my like those the the phone cameras go over Wi-Fi. I can't do all that out here. Maybe right here I could, but as soon as I step another few feet, it the, uh, starts dropping frames real bad. Yeah, it's coming out, just falling out. This one's anyway. I could be using. Yeah, there we go. So I could be using the uh, endoscope to uh, see what I'm doing. That's what I do a lot now inside. But. Uh, Yeah, I missed one all together. I kept thinking I got them. Yeah, they come out real easy. Once they've been, they've been easy. Now the new ones might be a little tougher. I don't know. But uh, 
Yeah, there's no absolutely no need to force them there. Now I know. They uh trying to trying to stay in the camera. And the lighting's pretty dim out here too in the garage, so and the sun's not up yet. But anyway, I can't I can't uh, make a video with the back door open because we're only there's another row of houses behind us, the service road, and then the highway, big busy highway. Jacksboro Highway. Ow! Oh, that's sharp. Still ain't got it good enough. Dang it, it came out some and was sharp when it hit my thumb. There we go. Oh! Got cramps in my hair. I don't know if it's cramps or what, but I got some sharp pain in my hand. There we go. Yeah, you just got to get them right. If you could see normally and everything, that would have been real easy. I just couldn't see what I'm doing hardly. I'm not going to throw those out yet. Actually, those those might be useful for something. So uh, I'll just throw them in this box, I guess. I don't want them in my parts that I'm planning on reusing here. Okay, now I need to find, um, I'm going to move this other trash can down the ways. And... Way down the way. Way down there. Yeah, see, now I can run around. I'm used to having a wireless mic because I've always used my, uh, I've always used my uh, phones with a lapel on them. That's what I'm doing here. But this time, now I'm using the Bluetooth receiver uh, instead of the Wi-Fi because uh, doesn't it can do the you know it's right here. I've got it plugged and I've got a, the camera and it plugged into power so that they don't run down and quit running theoretically. So I'm going to turn this around. Hopefully, if I get it. In such a way that you can see in the picture what I'm doing. And I can see what I'm doing. There we go. So I'm going to be putting it on there. And then whenever I start wiring this in, I'll just stick them through and bend those little tabs and it should stay. But I just want to be able to stick it in there. I don't have to crimp them in just yet. Oh, yeah, there's a spot. I don't know if you can see it on there. but let's See, I'll hold it like that, maybe. Uh, little spot right there. You, I really don't know if you can see it. Okay, I got to find the screw that goes in there. I think there's several of the same size. I remember it was a little bit bigger one. Better go that way a little more. Let's see. Oops, wrong way. That might be it. I kind of don't want to dig them all out of here and end up... Uh, I think I'm going to have to Dump them out to look at them. Though. Well, let's see. Yeah, I didn't get my light out yet. I just remembered that now. Let's see. I'd, it seemed to me while I was working that there was two or three different sizes of screws, and that was it. These things, I might as well just, these are the ceramic holders for the uh, heating, heating coil. I'm just going to put them all up in the 